uh, it first checks if it can find it online and if it can't then it will use the local file that's a really good way of doing this um, also our plugins it will add our plugins and our scripts uh, and this is correctly to do this um, we separate our common JavaScript, uh, for instance jQuery plugins, if you are using a certain jQuery plugin, and our custom scripts. So if you have to write your own code, you put it in scripts.js, and if you download anything, you can put it there. The reason for this is that if, if something goes wrong and you want to check where the problem is, you can always find out if it's the problem with the new version of a plugin, for instance, or if the problem is with your own script. And this one is uh, the PNG fix for Internet Explorer 7. Uh, I suggest you keep it in. Uh, it's just really useful um, if you use any PNGs. If you're sure that you're not using transparency, you can remove it, but I suggest you keep it in. Uh, this is Facebook X XBML implementation. I don't really use this, so I'm gonna remove this one as well. And save it. Okay, so now we got our basic template ready. Um, let's add some, some stuff to our, our, our main site, actually. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some basic structure uh, according to the grid we installed. Uh, the grid we installed is called uh, 140 grid. If you Google it, 140 pixels grid. Um, you will find it. It's a really nice grid to um, yeah, to, to, to order your site. I think I already explained it a little bit in the first first segment. Um, how it works is the following. I'm gonna go to our, first of all, our header. I'm simply gonna put some code here. Um, uh, h1 tag. This is our header. And as you can see, the header itself already has a class of row. Um, this is used for that grid. Uh, this will say, well, everything between this div or this header is one line, one row in the structure. And within a row, we always create a div. And I'm going to call it um, 12 call. Um, what this says is to the grid that this row is 12 columns wide. And 12 columns wide means the full width of the page because this template is based on 12 columns. If I would have said uh, this code is 6 columns, then it would be half of the page. Um, in this case, because it's 12 column, it automatically should I should automatically add a class of last, because the last part of a row should be defined as being last. That's the only two rules you need to remember. So, um, that's, that's our header. Let's, uh, let's save it and let's see what happens. I'm going to close this. I'm going to go to our backend. I clear our cache. Click OK and refresh. And we have our code. This is our header. Um, let me show you what happened with the row. Um, if you select our header, you can see the blue area. Um, and in the styles, you can see that the width is 1. 1140 pixels that's the max it can be because the screen is wide enough it's 100% wide and the overflow is hidden and it's centered watch what happens if I make the screen smaller the, the header stays centered and if it's a lot smaller it's simply less wide but the, the structure stays the same I'll show you uh, more of this in a second because we're going to create more content right now okay um, let's do the same for our container. You can see in the header there's already a container div with the class row. So when we go to our template code we can immediately start with a div called for instance 6 call. I'm gonna divide the page in two. I'm gonna add a div of 6 call. I'm gonna copy it. And I'm going to say here last, because this is the last part of a two column. I'm going to copy of cut this content and put it in the first one. And here I'm just going to add some content. Uh, D 
just like this, some general text for now. I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna go to a backend, I'm gonna clear our cache, and I'm gonna refresh. And nothing, n nothing happened, what I meant, let's find out why. Um, I'm assuming I made the CSS wrong. Let's open our code, go to assets, templates, main, CSS, and open the style. If you scroll down a little bit, you see the CSS 1140, 1140 pixels grid. And here you see our columns, and I did six call instead of call six. So let's change that. Uh, so this should be call six. And that's why it's not working. And I should do the same for the header. Call 12. Okay. Let's try this again. Refresh our cache. cache. And now you can see this text is centered. So we have now two columns. If I select it in Firebug. This is the left one and this is the right one. The left one has some margin to the right and the right one does not because it's classified by being last. That's the reason why it needs that class. Okay, let's add some more. Let's just add some, some more structure to our page. Really fast, really easy. Let's say our client wants five columns or not, four columns below this. Uh, 12 divided by four is three, of course. So let's add um, one, two, three, four, and let's make these columns instead of six, three wide. And of course, we need to remove these last parts because only the last one should have a last four columns, three wide. But this is a new row, of course, because the first row ended here. So let's add it. Closing div for the first row. I'm gonna do this. And row. And I'm gonna add a div with a class called row. That's it. We don't need to close this one, but because that will happen in the footer, as you can see, this one. So that's the that's the code we need to add. Add save it and I'm going to refresh oh sorry clear our cache and I'm going to refresh as you can see we now have some nice code uh, something is wrong with the structure let me check it out um, okay uh, as you can see if you check out the header, there's this one is called container row. This one as well. But if we go to our template code, we end the first one, end row container. So we need to add container here as well. And then it should be fine. Clear cache. and refresh and now it looks nice. Um, let me show you some CSS to really show you how well this really really works. I'm gonna add another one of this, these. Um, I'm gonna add two actually, two rows. But I'm gonna remove the second part and I'm gonna make this call one. Actually, now column two. Otherwise, it's a little bit too much. So I'm gonna make six columns in below this. One, two, three, four, We move last from this one, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six columns of two wide. That means twelve. So 
So if we refresh now, clear cache again. We now have six columns below this one. We need another div here. I removed one too many, sorry about that. Like this. Let me refresh again. I'm making some mistakes, but these can be useful probably for the screencast. Like this. Okay. So this looks good. Uh, let me show you what happens and why this grid system is really useful. Um, everything is divided in rows so just horizontal rows and if a row has a lot of columns they are really ordered by percentage instead of pixels and that's why it's really flexible and by flexible I mean this if I create make the screen smaller for instance somebody's watching it on an iPad maybe this size uh, maybe a even smaller, a new, a new Android tablet, it looks like this. And if somebody looks at it on an iPhone, it looks like this. Everything stays really structured and same order. And that's really, really useful, really powerful. So that's the grid. That's the basic template we have right now. Okay, so we created our own template, main, based on the Motex boilerplate. But if we create a new page, it doesn't use that one yet. So let's fix that. Let's go to System, System Settings, in, at Filter by Area, go down to Site, and here you'll see Default Template. Simply double click on the one and select our main template. And now every new page you create will automatically use our own template. I think that's a very useful thing. All right. Um, well, that's the basics. Um, you might think, well, what does this boilerplate do? It's, it's, it's really, there's nothing to it. But actually, if you can see here, there's already a favicon. You can change that really easily. Um, if you look at it in Internet Explorer 6, 7, 8, everything works. Um, in our template code, in our header, we have all kinds of useful stuff. The style sheets is already aligned. Everything works immediately. So this type of stuff saves you a lot of time otherwise you would have to really structure this all by yourself so please uh, don't forget that this is a useful starting point this is a really great start of your website and a lot of problems will be fixed i'd like to thank uh, smooth graphics for this code it's really Ansel Hanneman it's really great visit this website ansel.novolo.de um, Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you visit my website again, Design From Within. Um, if you didn't catch my other tutorial, Making ModX Revolution Multilingual uh, with Babel, so many languages in ModX Revolution, I showed you that here. And this is part two. This has been part two of using the fantastic ModX boilerplate. Please uh, join me again, and uh, thanks for watching.